Because it's easy to teach about what God is doing because it's relevant. Yes. Oh, Theophilus, uh. I'm going to write this treatise to you in Acts 1.1 about all that Jesus began to both do and teach. Jesus did it to him first and then taught on it second. Mm -hmm. That's Middle Eastern way. That's a Jewish way. That's the Bible way. That's Amen. effective. Amen. We Amen. try to teach on it and then do it. Yeah. Why don't we just do it? We've got people's attention. It's a sign or a wonder. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now we can teach on it Take because it's a living epistle seen and read before men. Uh -huh. Amen. You want to talk about the God of provision? Why don't you just multiply some fish and loaves and then talk about the God of provision? People with an experience are never at the hands of a man with just a doctrine. Right. Yes. Right. And these people had had experiences. Yes. Yes. Man. Yes. yes. The disciples were ignorant and untrained men, they said in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. But they knew they had been with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. They hadn't been to the seminary. They've been with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the same works that came through Jesus came through them, and that's how they knew by association that they had been with Jesus. Yes. People are not interested in your religion. That's right. Not at all. That's right. But if you can prove to them that you've been with Jesus, and he walks with you, and he talks with you, and you can represent him as he is, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if you can release him, into the earth that it might be done in earth as it is in heaven, people will follow you yes. because you're following him. Yes. That's it, that's it. They're not joining a social club. No. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. God's calling us in 2013 as of December 21st. Something's changed. Something has changed. The power has gone from the pulpit to the pew and he's raising up anyone. Mm -hmm. He doesn't Call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Oh, that's it. Amen. You're fine just the way you are. He loves you in your current state, but he loves you too much to leave you in this condition. Amen. And as I began to take the pulpit, I began to talk about church kids versus kingdom kids. Churchianity versus Christianity. Relationship, re religion versus relationship. Thermometers that can take the temperature versus thermostats that can change the temperature. And now people were seeing it. And that which I preached on Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday day, and Saturday night now was manifesting on Sunday morning. People began to line up to give their testimonies about what the Lord had done in the previous days. And people knew these people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew the testimonies were real. Yeah. And the phone rang. And it was Israel Agre calling from Africa. <laughs> and I answered the phone. I said, Jesus, Metromaka, 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 Andesia, in the Ibu tongue. And he began to praise the Lord because it means Jesus, he touched me. He touched Hallelujah. me. He really, really touched me. And he began to talk to me. I said, Israel. I'm in a service right now. Oh, I apologize. I said, no, it's perfect praying. I need you to pray impartation over the congregation. So I put him on speakerphone. I said, this is Israel Agre. I said, I'm your brother from another mother, but this is your brother from the motherland. I love it. So all the way around the world, Israel begins to pray. As if he's in a crusade with 50 or 60,000 people like when he Ooh, normally preaches. Yeah. And that miracle anointing starts to release corporately over the congregation. Yeah. And as it does, he starts calling out words of knowledge. Mm. And people start getting healed in the congregation. Hallelujah. And the power of God hits and he gets done praying. And it's, it's Holy Ghost pandemonium. What? On Sunday. The service started at 10. We got out of there at 2. And I got out of the parking lot at 3. As people were coming, I, want, I need prayer. And see, people come up to you, really, they know what they want. But they're afraid to ask you what they want. Yeah. Right? So they kind of beat around the bush. I'm like, okay, stop. What do you really want from the Lord? <laughs> <laughs> well, and then they'll tell you, right? They kind of look left or right.
right on my foot. It's just you, me, and the Lord, and we're keeping it between the three of us. <laughs> and so they start to talk, stop, I've got it, I've heard from heaven, I know what you need, and I know what God wants to do, and they're in agreement. Bam, the power of God hits. So people are getting filled with the Spirit right in the parking lot of the church. Good Lord. And young kid, and the pastor has come out, and people are bringing things to my car, and the pastor's like, amen, and the pastor's like, I praise the Lord. See, their parishioners are getting delivered Hallelujah. and set free, Hallelujah. and there is an excitement. I finally get out of there because I had to get to Bentonville because I had to get back <laughs> to connect with my jurisdiction because when you're on federal parole, <laughs> you've got to obey the authorities. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. But every one of us has to submit to someone. Yeah. And if you're not submitted to someone, you better find some man or woman of God or some authority to be accountable to. Yeah. And you have banks on your river, otherwise the water will be everywhere and you'll think you're in God's will. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I like what Jeff Gay said, president of Heart Ministries recently. He said, you know, he says, I'm not a controlling person. He says, and I submit to authority. He says, but I rebel against a control spirit. Yeah. You see the difference? Uh -huh. You can submit to authority, but don't submit to a control spirit. And that's what's in much of the church when you raise your hands and they look at you. That's a control spirit. And you want to know what the root of a control spirit is? The root of a control spirit is fear and insecurity. They're fearful, they're insecure, so they want to control you. Instead of liberating you to go do what God told you to do. And then them praying for you, and covering you, and advising you, and sharing sage wisdom with you. That you might go forth in all the earth, and preach the gospel, plundering hell, and populating heaven. And these signs will follow you. When you, you see what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the gospel. Come on. The real medicine. Gospel. That's the medicine you need. I'm not opposed to medicine. Praise God for it. God works through it. So does the devil. You better pray over your stuff before you take it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Pharmacia. That's a whole other message. That's not, that's not for now. It's not for now. Wow. Anyway, so I got a text message the next day from the pastor. Because Israel actually called back after he got off the phone. And I said, Israel, you know I'm still in the service. Go I'm like, hold on a second. He says, I'm getting two more words of knowledge after I got off the phone. He calls the people out. They won't respond. And there was an issue, a male, and he says, don't be ashamed. God wants to set you free. You've had a father who's an alcoholic. You're 28 years old. This and that. He's spoken death over your life. I want to break the curse. The guy wouldn't respond. Israel spoke. I said, just go ahead and pray. Break that thing. He says, there's a woman with a right hip. Ba 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 ba. God's healing you, this and that. She didn't respond. Get a text message. A woman who was in the service had to leave. And she had to leave because the anointing was so 